everybody, Martin at Flickering Feathers again today and I'm tying the Bee Bream shrimp. Um, a few people asked me when asked about this, um, I posted some pictures of the fishing for the black snapper or the black bream um, that we were doing during the summer in Hamamatsu and I've been asked to share the pattern so I'll do a few for myself and a couple extra for the giveaway and let you see how to tie it. So as always I'll put a materials list in the description along with a link to the Patreon page for anybody that wants to support the channel get access to the members only content the monthly fly tying classes and then turn into the giveaways alternatively hit the like button share the video, watch it all the way to the end subscribe hit the bell if you do so that you get notified and you can come and watch the videos so I've got my hook in my vise and this is this is a hook specifically designed for the snapper it's the Gamakatsu Chinu ring eye um, a very wide gape on it this is a size 6 um, although it's Japanese sizing so the sizing is different 6 is bigger than a, a 4 or a 3 and these I mean, so you could, if you want, you could use a like a G carp or something if that's easier for you to get. You'll notice also it's a reversed hook, so the there's no an inline hook, and I think that does help you with hooking these fish. I've started some fire orange. This is Danville's. It's uh, one forty denier, and it's fluorescent. Right, I'm a big believer in fluorescence. Um, Especially in a fly like this where it's not that obtrusive, it's sort of in the in the core of the fly. And I'm waiting this, this is an extra small lead dumbbell. Um, obviously you can adjust the dumbbells. Just want to check that's the right place, that's fine. This is only the second one I've tied in this batch, so I need to check. Um, Obviously you can adjust the weight, but here where I'm fishing it's often very skinny, quite technical. Um, over in Hamamatsu and the flats around about Tokyo as well. Um, so it's light. I'd go a fish, a fish extra small than micro lead most of the time. So I've got them locked in and I'm bringing my thread back to the start of the bend. I'm going to take some craft fur. And this fly is criminally simple. Um, there's nothing to it. It's a very easy, very quick tie. Um, I mean, very ideal if you're a guide. So I've just got some tan craft fur. If you need it darker, just use the sand or use um, even the barred stuff. And I've just got the rainies, the extra select, and it's really long. This, uh, if you've got, if you've ever bought a patch of cheap stuff that's shorter, this is a good flight to use it on because you only want it to be an inch long, thirty mil maybe, at the most, twenty five to thirty mil. So I'm just taking out some of the longer fibres and realigning them, and then to make sure I've got some good thickness, I'm going to come in and just pinch away some of the, the really kind of fine long fibres into a bunch it's much quicker than trying to stack everything up and that will still give you a nice taper rather than a square edge that you can get for cutting it I've kept this rubbish for the bottom because that's going to be dubbed as the body so off this in I mean as I say 30 mil so you want it I mean, on this hook it's nearly a hook length off the back, so I'll just take that and sort of rock it around the shank a wee bit take a loose gathering wrap, tie it in see how we're sitting and then I'm going to come slightly round the bend 
again this helps, you've got a big wide gape and you're fishing quite a light um, a lightly weighted fly, this helps to make sure it turns, flips that drag there from the tail will help help it so it fishes hook up now I'll come down here trim away my waist And I'll just, I'm just going to mix this up as well. And that can just, I'll drop that in the dubbing pile. When I tie these, I end up with a big, um, there's, you always get, for tying the tails, you always end up with more under fur than you need for to dub the bodies. So you end up with like a, a batch of craft fur dubbing as well, which is handy for a lot of things. Um, so I'm going to invert this. And I'll get a bit of, this is fluorescent orange crystal flash. It's just a scrap end for the last fly. I've got to fold it in half. And just tie it back. And I only want a single strand on either side. Right. The, the, the fish here are not very tolerant of the flash. Um, a wee bit's fine, but you can very easily overdo it but if you're using this fly I mean if you're using it for bone, unpre unpressured bones or something because it will certainly catch them you could put a bit more in or if the bream where you live are more tolerant of the flash you can put a wee bit more in and then I mean if you feel that it's too much you can cut it out on the water so I'm going to take some quite thick head cement here and I'm going to just cement this because I'm no ribbing the fly or anything to protect the dubbing I'm going to dub the body fairly heavily and loosely and then brush it to make it buggy and this just dubbing over that wet cement just helps to add some durability to the pattern so build the dubbing up on the thread um, don't try to put too much on at once or it will just bunch but like you can go over the top of the stuff that's already wound on but dub it heavily this is um, based in it's my mate Carlos he lives on Hamanaco which is the biggest the big lake um, that's, and it's, it's a main bream fishing place in Japan uh, but he uses dubbing and it's just what he's brushed from his office the the cat in his office um i don't have a cat so i just use the craft fur and it works fine now i'm not been too fussy about the underside here right you can see i've barely covered that it's just i'd be happy even if it was just all thread showing on the underside but i do cover it on top I mean if you want to take a bit of time and cover that up then do so then get in with your velcro get a good scrub only in the hook gap side just leave this you can even like press that so that the whatever's this is pushed right into that wet cement you've got that wee fuzzy body and then I'm going to take some flexi floss or super stretch floss or span flex, whatever, whatever the brand name is of the stuff that you get. Uni stretch will do as well off the spool. This is half a half a strand. I mean, it will need cut, um, and I'm going to tie it in. It's a bit fiddly because it, it's very springy material. Tie it in, sort of on my side on top, or in the hook gap. Take a few wraps, pull it over, and it's quite important to use span flex, right? Because it won't break, right? The the, the snapper will pull at this and it will stand up to their, their teeth. I mean, what I'm doing here, that would snap any other rubber leg. I'm pulling that pretty hard. It doesn't look as neat because it's all curly and all over the shop, but it moves great in the water. 
Um, and then I'm going to put some wee bars on them. Just to add a wee bit of colour variation, I suppose, in the pattern. Get another one. That's fine. Again, it's easier when it's a wee bit longer to do that. And I'll come back and I'll cut them. Don't want them too long. I'll cut them just. You know, if you're, they're too long, they'll easily tangle up in the, the hook. So maybe, I don't know, I'm about half a hook length behind the back of the hook, and that's the maximum I can go. You can see they're springy, loads of movement. And then the last thing is just the weed guard. Always put the weed guard on. You can cut it off when you're fishing if it's bothering you. Um, weed guards are not fish guards. If they are, you're not tying them in properly. Another thing is you'll be able to put your fly places and catch a fish that you would never get otherwise. So I'm just using the wee double sprig, so I've got my wee V shape of hard nylon. This is £20 hard nylon. Three turns in front, pull it over, three turns behind, maybe four, pull it through, and you can turn that up and then. It's just a case of, you can take a wee quick figure eight, or two, to sort of separate the, the sprigs. And then I'll whip finish behind them. And another one. And as I say, I mean, when this will not stop fish getting hooked. When a, when a snapper bites down in that, that just collapses out the way, but it turns a fly away from rocks and rubble and what have you, protects it for the turtle grass to an extent. So we'll just come in, just check my length, trim it off. Be a bit longer than the hook point, and then coming on my head cement. I'm going to just put plenty on here, right in between the lead eyes. Why not? That's about because it's about of exposed thread. Or in about here, get it well well saturated. Don't worry about the hook eye. I'd rather have more on and have to clean the eye than not enough. And that will soak in. And then just make sure your eyes clear. And there you go. That's the wee bream shrimp or I mean it's just a wee creature they eat. There's a lot of hermit crabs around here that they eat. Um, but I mean it's a shrimp, it's a crab, it's whatever. It's just something that they can eat. And as I say Use them for bream, but you'll catch a trigger in this, you'll catch a bone fish in this, you know, you'll catch loads of wee snapper species and anything that's about the reefs. So, hope that was useful, hope you enjoyed it. If you did, remember to give me a thumbs up below and subscribe to the channel. Take lines, guys, bye.